Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and with the recent official announcement of the new iPhones coming late 2021, I thought it'd be a good time to revisit my iPhone buying guide. If you haven't been around for too long, basically here we like to go through every single iPhone from the most expensive to the very cheapest pre-owned off eBay, anything still supported on iOS, and give my full recommendations and thoughts on each price point from $1,000 to $50. So what iPhone is best for the mid-tier crowd, the high-budget crowd, the low-budget crowd, you get the idea. Timestamps will be in the description as always, so you can skip ahead if you'd like to. Prices reference will be in American dollars. When it comes to new phones, I'll be using the prices from Apple's website, just buying the phone straight up, not on contract. Obviously, buying through a carrier could be quite a bit cheaper, but it's easier just to kind of stick to that standard. But let's not waste any time and jump right into this, starting with the best of the best and the newest of the new, the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. These are the best and most expensive of what Apple offers. The 13 Pro is a lot like the 12 Pro from last year, but with an array of upgrades. There's a smaller notch, of course, and that's also on the iPhone 13 and 13 mini. But beyond that, the biggest one of note, I think, for most will be the 120 hertz ProMotion display, which essentially offers up to double the frames per second on screen than before, making for a smooth, buttery experience like seen on iPad Pro. It's a terrific addition and one that was much needed, but beyond that, it's a small upgrade over the 12 Pro with naturally a better camera, better processor, and better battery life. It's also really darn expensive, starting at $999 for the smaller 13 Pro and $1099 for the Pro Max. Only buy this phone if you've got money to burn and want to flex the best iPhone. For most people, if you want a really good iPhone but are still at least somewhat money conscious, one tier down with the iPhone 13 or 13 mini is going to be a lot more appealing. Like the iPhone 10R, 11, and 12 before it, the 13 features many of the best aspects of the 13 Pro like the specs, but not some of the more uh, luxurious ones like the 120 hertz display. It still has a gorgeous OLED display. It'll take fantastic photos and be an absolute beast in performance for years to come. For the vast majority of people who want the new iPhone, this is the one to go for. Specifically, I recommend the iPhone 13 at $799. That's a great price and a well-saved $200 from the 13 Pro. The 13 mini might be tempting at $100 cheaper for $699. Just keep in mind the phone is very, very small and you should only buy it if you specifically enjoy smaller devices. It's about the size of the old iPhone 5, 5S, and so on, just with small bezels. On screen right now is the iPhone 12 mini, which is the same size just to give some perspective, so it is quite small, and for most, the extra 100 bucks will be worth it for the 6.1 inch display on the regular 13. Following this, technically the next best phone in Apple's lineup would be the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, but Apple's actually discontinued those, just like they have in previous years with the 10, 10s, and 11 Pro. This is because the 12 Pro and 13 Pro, quite frankly, are fairly similar, and so there's just no real place for it in their lineup. It doesn't mean anything negative about the 12 Pro, though. It's still a great phone. You just can't buy it straight from Apple. And over the next six months or so, most carriers will eventually clear them out, but should still have some inventory, meaning you do have some time to get the phones new if you really want to. The used market at the moment is still going to overprice them as the new phones were literally just announced, but give it a couple months and the prices will slowly get more reasonable. However, I don't recommend the 12 Pro. I have nothing against the phone, I think it's fantastic, but given how it's still going to be pretty expensive, I'd rather put that money into the iPhone 13, which will likely cost a similar amount and has the newest features, or even the 13 Pro for a few hundred dollars more. Of course, it's all up to you, but while we're here talking about phones no longer being sold by Apple, let's briefly touch on the 11 Pro as well. The iPhone 11 Pro is going to be very difficult to find brand new, and maybe in some spots you might find a carrier that hasn't cleared it out yet, but the phone is two years old at this point, which means you're very likely going to be looking at the used market. I would urge you instead to take a look at the iPhone 11, 12, or 13. The 13 and 12 especially would be good options compared to the 11 Pro, but if for whatever reason you're set on the 11 Pro, it does sell on eBay for around $600 from what I can tell. I did see it as low as $500 for the smaller Pro, which is honestly a pretty good price point. But then the iPhone 12 is not that much more, and you'd be getting it brand new, so it's up to you, but for me, I would always rather just go for a brand new iPhone. So next on the list, let's take a look at that iPhone 12, a phone that's been out a year now, and one that doesn't perform like it. It's a fantastic device, actually the one I've been using this past year. And you can't forget about the iPhone 12 mini as well. It's uh, one of the smallest flagship ships out there, just like the 13 mini. And with the 12 and 12 mini, you're not getting that reduced notch size, but beyond that, there's not a whole lot of differences between the phones. For the price of 700 bucks, the 12 is worth it. It's got the specs of the 12 Pro, and the camera is still one of the best out there. And the 12 mini is a great buy if you want a small phone at $600 as well. But here's where things get weird. First off, the 12 is the same price as the 13 mini. I think that I would rather a 12 over a 13 mini, just because, again, the minis are very small. Although, if you prefer the mini, that's 
great and you can save an extra hundred bucks. But even regardless of the mini, the 13 is only a hundred dollars more than the iPhone 12. 700 bucks for the regular 12, 800 for the regular 13. This unfortunately does make the iPhone 12 kind of not great value. My biggest reason for this, the iPhone 12 comes with 64 gigabytes at the base price and the 13 comes with 128. If you want that same amount of space on the 12, you'll be paying $750. And then, I mean, for 50 bucks more, you're getting a device that's a full year newer. It's kind of a no-brainer, in my opinion, to go for the 13. You get double the storage space for $100 more. I feel like Apple's pricing here isn't great, but it does make the 13 look that much more appealing. The next best thing would be the iPhone 11, which is at a significantly reduced price of $500. Not a bad deal whatsoever for what is still a great phone. The only issue is that the screen is LCD and not OLED, which means you're not getting colors as rich or vibrant as the iPhone 12 and better, or the iPhone 10, 10s, and 11 Pro. Those OLED panels have higher pixel densities, they're more crisp, you get true blacks, they're definitely a lot better. However, I don't think I've ever met an iPhone 11 owner or 10R owner who's regretted their purchase and have any complaints about the screen. It's not something you would notice of being lower quality unless you're looking for it. I fully recommend the iPhone 11. It's got an amazing camera, the specs are terrific, and all in all, you have a long life of updates still ahead of it. And now before we go over the iPhone 10s and 10R, let's go over the iPhone SE as it's currently the last iPhone Apple is selling brand new. The iPhone SE came out in early 2020, and while it is approaching two years old, the specs help keep it relevant with the same chipset as the iPhone 11. It has that old home button design with the same size as the iPhone 8, so that's really going to appeal to those who aren't a fan of change, as well as those wanting a cheaper price tag as the device comes in at $400, making it the least expensive in Apple's lineup. The flaws of the SC? Well, the camera isn't great, being about roughly equivalent with the 10R, although actually having the sensor of the iPhone 8, just with software improvements. It's not bad, it's just nowhere close to the iPhone 11 at only $100 more. And because it's a small phone, battery life isn't going to be nearly as good as better options, so that's something to keep in mind. But all in all, for $400, the SE does make for a nice complete package, and it's not too uncommon to see deals for it if you look around. This is the phone I recommend when it comes to people like seniors, or they don't even have to be necessarily elderly, but someone who just really doesn't want to change up their iPhone experience. It took them a while to learn how to use their current iPhone, you know, maybe they're still on the iPhone 6, they don't want anything drastically different. The iPhone SE is perfect for that kind of person. For nearly everyone else, I would go for the iPhone 11, it's not that much more, and it is a much better phone. Alright, the iPhone XS and XS Max. The XS has been discontinued since the 11 and 11 Pro came out, so you're unlikely to ever find it new anymore, but looking at the used market on ebay.com, it generally seems to go for around $300 to $400 for the smaller one. Honestly, a fantastic price point considering what you're getting, at least on the surface. And there's no real difference between the small one and the Max. Both of them don't have great batteries. Uh, that's actually the biggest flaws in these phones, in my opinion. The battery life will be significantly worse than the 10R, the 11, and the better. They didn't really improve it over the iPhone 10, and that was probably that phone's biggest flaw. So while a healthy battery should get you through the day with moderate use, I wouldn't expect too much even out of the 10s Max. And of course, if you're buying a phone used, there's definitely a risk there. The price is pretty decent, but I don't really recommend the 10s. It's a great phone three years later, don't get me wrong, but the value when an iPhone 11 goes for $500 brand new, it's good value, but personally, I again, I would always lean to buying new. And then the iPhone 10R, a phone that was sold by Apple since its release in 2018, all the way until just recently, meaning that it won't be too hard to find the phone brand new still, especially because it was one of Apple's most popular devices even up to now. Carriers may put these on clearance over the next few months, so I would definitely keep an eye out for that. And on the used market, they seem to be going for around $300, a very good price point, especially if it's refurbished and has a healthy battery. The camera is solid, the battery life is good, the display is lower tier, but still of the same quality of the 11 and SE. And all in all, the 10R makes for an amazing package, especially at the low price you could potentially find it for. I'd recommend the iPhone 11 over it, simply because 500 bucks for that phone brand new, plus you get that ultra wide camera lens uh, with a second camera lens there and better performance because it's a year newer. Even with that, I don't think you would regret picking up the 10R, whether new, used, or refurbished. It's a great phone even three years after it launched. And now we come to the 2017 iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 was a huge deal four years ago, and I'm happy to say it still holds up pretty decently today, especially with that design and the display. It's gorgeous. The only exception might be battery life, and I mean, it's a big exception, but beyond that, it's a fast phone with a decent camera and that gorgeous OLED screen that offers just about as great quality as the newest 13 Pro, albeit on a 
smaller device. On eBay.com, the 10 goes for around $300, which surprised me a little bit given how the 10s seemed to be close to that. For around that price, I'd be leaning towards the 10s over it, but I'd really be going for the 10R over both of them. This is because, again, you can still find the 10R new, but mainly because the battery life is going to be significantly better, even if you're missing out on the OLED. That all being said, the 10 or the 10s are definitely options to be aware of, and if you're someone who likes playing the used market, uh, they're very, very tempting iPhones right now, especially as those prices could even go down in the coming months. Then there's the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, two phones that came out just before the iPhone 10 in late 2017. These two phones are very different situations, and starting with the smaller iPhone 8, don't buy it, it's a decent deal considering the specs and general hardware at around 200 bucks on eBay, sometimes less, but it's not worth it when the iPhone 10, 10R, and 10S all are really not that much more money, and particularly that 10R when you're going to get much better battery life as well as the better camera and specs. If you really love that form factor of the iPhone 8 with the smaller screen and home button, the 2020 iPhone SE is literally made for you. It's the perfect device. Sure, it's 400 bucks, but it literally is the best Apple has ever made when it comes to that home button form factor. You could also try to find one used. It probably won't cost you that much more than the iPhone 8 as is. The iPhone 8 Plus is a different beast altogether, as unlike the iPhone 8, it doesn't actually have a direct replacement. The iPhone SE is the size of the smaller 8 and has no plus model, meaning that if you like both the large size and the home button, unfortunately the 8 Plus is as good as it gets. The phone will cost closer to $300 on eBay, often under or over depending on how thoroughly you search and if you get lucky. That really applies to all these prices I've said so far. You might not be able to get it for the same price, and of course it all varies region to region, but the 8 Plus especially has had the tendency in the past to be overpriced, and this is because, again, it's the last big home button iPhone. I will say the 8 Plus does have pretty good battery life, especially compared to the smaller 8, but I really don't think it's worth the cost at the moment when the iPhone XR is roughly the same price used and has a year's worth of better specs. If you really love that home button, I strongly encourage you to reconsider that, as I don't think it's as difficult as some people think to adapt to the newer gesture system. That being said, the 2020 iPhone SE is always an option, and hopefully over the next few months the 8 Plus will see a fair gradual decline in price. The SE, like the 8 Plus, can take portrait mode photos, albeit using software versus hardware, though I doubt many would notice the difference. Back in these days, though, with the 8 Plus, you needed that second camera lens, which means the smaller iPhone 8 cannot take any portrait mode pictures, so keep that in mind if for whatever reason you were looking to pick one of these up. The iPhone 7 and 7 Plus from 2016 are next on the list, and keep in mind at this point we're looking at smartphones that are literally five years old. It shouldn't be shocking that I don't particularly recommend buying a device that old, even if it is still honestly solid and fully supported. If you're buying used, the battery life will likely not be great after being used for years, although the 7 Plus has had decent battery life in my experience and had a good health around 90% or so, there's not too much to worry about. The smaller 7 on the other hand is pretty rough in the battery department regardless of the health. It's a small phone and thus small battery. It can last the day with light usage, but I wouldn't rest on that and I'd expect to have to charge it with a bit more frequency than just overnight. The 7 Plus, like the 8 Plus, has the secondary telephoto camera lens, which allows for portrait mode photos, something the smaller 7, like the smaller 8, cannot do. The 7 Plus will cost you around $200 on eBay.com, and honestly, pretty darn decent price point given how well this phone still manages to perform. The smaller 7 might be even more tempting at closer to $100 on eBay, which is actually kind of absurd given the specs and relative performance of the device. For 5 years old, it still packs a massive punch, able to run almost anything even like the 13 Pro Max can do, really. It's iOS 15, you know, it can still do pretty much anything. It just has a small battery, and so because of that, I'd only say go for it in situations where you're on a very strict budget, and also maybe you can get a cheap portable battery along with it, or you already have the ability to charge it frequently just to be safe. The batteries on old phones, that's always the big thing, and I always want to emphasize it because I find that people on old phones like this, typically it's not the performance that's necessarily the problem so much as the battery life. That does seem to be almost always the main problem with old phones. But both the 7 Plus and 7 are great budget options right now, assuming you're willing to deal with the potential downsides. And believe it or not, despite being five years old, there are even older smartphones still supported on iOS 15, with the 2015 iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus, as well as the 2016 original iPhone SE. Any iPhone older than that just straight up isn't going to be worth buying, and I'll rush through these, as I think the 7 at $100 is a pretty good entry level for those needing to save as much cash as possible. The iPhone 6S Plus is almost identical to the smaller 6S, with the only notable difference really being two things, the bigger size, and with that, the bigger battery. Though with the phones being six years old, 
holds, uh, you can't really expect much regardless. Batteries, 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 I'll always mention it because, again, it tends to be people's biggest problem. The 6S starts at around $70, $80, and that's pretty darn good for what the phone is capable of, but the 7 at 100 is definitely worth going up to in my opinion. Also, make sure you avoid the 16 gigabyte options like the Plague. It's way too little space, and you'll be able to do very little with it on iOS 15, especially in the way of downloading apps or taking pictures. Even if you're not doing either of those things, trust me, 16 gigs is not enough. And then if you're really set on saving cash, the small iPhone SE costs well under $100, sometimes even going for under 50 if you look around. And the phone is essentially just a smaller iPhone 6S. This is the ultimate budget iPhone. If you need a phone as cheap as possible, this is the answer. Just again, make sure you try to avoid the 16 gig option and prepare for a rough time in the battery life department. It is extremely impressive. Apple is supporting smartphones this far back. The 6S and SE should receive consistent updates until the launch of iOS 16 around the September of 2022. I highly doubt it gets anything past that. You never know, but I would not expect it. And even at that point, uh, when it's no longer supported, the phones will still be usable. They just won't be getting any newer features or quality of life changes. And that now brings us to the end. Having gone over pretty much every single iPhone that's even remotely worth buying in 2021 or 2022, as they all run the latest version of iOS 15. The list keeps getting bigger and bigger with Apple supporting their phones so far back now, but let's take just a little bit more time here and go over what are, in my opinion, the best options for each general price range. First off, if you want a great phone without too much concern for the cost, the iPhone 13 is a fantastic choice at $800 straight up. The 13 Pro is, of course, even better, but I think saving a couple hundred bucks is going to be worth it for the vast, vast majority of people. The iPhone 12, having half the space of the 13 at only 100 bucks less, that's probably not worth it. Though, of course, there could be deals that end up saving you some more money. And don't get me wrong, the 12 is still fantastic if that's what you end up with. Again, I've been using it the last year consistently. I love the phone. It's great. It's just as is right now. I do think the 13 is better value. For the mid-range crowd, I really recommend the iPhone 11 at that amazing price of $500. That price point for the value you get here is amazing. Yeah, it's the older display, not OLED, but the specs and camera are still of flagship quality, and you'll have years of strong performance on consistent iOS updates. The phone's a good size, the battery life is fantastic. The iPhone 11 is going to be probably my biggest recommendation for the average Joe over the next year. The smaller iPhone SE at $400 is really only worth it for those who really, really want to keep the home button or don't want to change up the experience. Otherwise, every darn time I'll say pay the extra hundred for that better iPhone 11. From here, let's go over the used market. For me, it's hard to justify buying a used device when you're paying nearly as much as you would for one brand new. And so when it comes to buying used, the most expensive iPhone I personally would go for right now is the iPhone 10R. This is because I've seen it for even cheaper than 300 on eBay. There are tons of them out there because it's been so popular and it's been sold for so long. It's a great phone and you might even be able to find it brand new right now as it was only just discontinued. So you have lots of options with the 10R and it's only slightly worse than the 11. I think when it comes to value, that probably offers the most, especially if you do find it for under $300. A tier down in price, I'd say the iPhone 7 Plus at under 200 or the 7 at around 100 is certainly worth the cash. And if you're on an extremely tight budget, the iPhone SE at 50 bucks, I mean, that's pretty tough to argue with. As always, just make sure you're looking around a lot. Don't buy the first phone you see and make sure the seller is reputable. Make sure that it's not iCloud locked. Make sure that they've signed out of the device and definitely check multiple sources. Uh, sometimes there can be significant price differences. So look at your local Facebook marketplace or Craigslist or whatever's around. And I know for a fact that if you put some time into it, you can definitely find a good deal if you really want to buy used. So with that, I think I'm right about done here. Hopefully this helped you out. And if it did, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for future buying guides for iPhones and hopefully for iPad and Apple Watch soon. When those do come out, I'll make sure to link them in the description. Are you planning on buying a new iPhone soon? Make sure you leave a comment below. Which one do you think is the best value right now? Always curious to see where people's heads are at. With that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time. Thank you